This video podcast is brought to you by McCarter Online. Well, I think it's what I'm doing to the RSC, <laughs> which is getting on their nerves at every five minutes. Because they, 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 I mean, a part of my job is to sort of be provocative. They pick the um, and so I come in and I say things like, well, what about, the, I mean, they do, they'll do a play and I'll say, well, if I were a, a really uh, a inner city black kid from America and I came to see this play, <laughs> would I sit through the whole thing? Probably not. And when I say things like that, they go, well, we're not doing theater for that. I was like, yes, but if you're not, then who are you doing theater for? And don't pretend to me that you don't, you know, they'll, every year, every theater says, we want to open up and widen our audiences and get this kind of person in it. Theater is universal, and I was like, well, if you keep doing theater for the same person over and over again, those people usually die. Because all you have to do is So if you're not opening up the doors and finding good ways to get those people, get other people into the theater, then what are you going? How are you going to keep the theater alive? What are you going to do? And they they go, oh, the little black kid might have a point. <laughs> and so they scuffle back a little bit, and they, you know, and they actually, in the end of the day, they love it because then they, they, they'll say that I'm bristling them, but then in the five minutes, they'll say, you know, we want to invite you to this new artistic board meeting, blah, blah, blah. And I'll go, oh, I'm doing all right. They haven't fired me yet. And if they do, then I'll just come back to America and bother you guys. So it's all right. <laughs> but I, I do love being there. I mean, there's nothing like sitting in a room hearing the best actors and best Shakespearean actors in the world say Shakespeare. There's nothing like it. And there's nothing like saying how ambitious Shakespeare were, was. Because he'll do the, and I say were because there's 90 different Shakespeare's, so there's not supposed to, we are not allowed to say was because that means there's only one Shakespeare, but actually. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but then when you see these plays and you look at just how ambitious, I mean, there's a, here's a story where it's about two people getting married, but then there's, they get married and they, there's these other kids who want to get married, but they can't get married, so they run into the forest and they run around and there's fairies and pixie dust and flowers and a little Indian boy and you know donkeys running around and then there's this group of people who want to put on a play, but then one of them gets turned into a donkey and their names are Quince and Flute and all kinds of weird things. I mean, it's like it's ambitious. This stuff is big and huge, and they did it. You know, they did it and they do it still, and it, it survives somehow. The stories are compelling and draw you in. So as a playwright, you go. I'll never be as good as Shakespeare, so my stupid ideas are fine, you know? Right? Me wanting to put, you know, a swimming pool on stage is not that big of a deal. Shakespeare had flying, had a bear, you know what I mean? So, uh, it, may, it gives you courage, I think. It definitely gives you courage. <laughs> this podcast has been brought to you by McCarter Theatre in Princeton, New Jersey. For tickets, call 609-258. ARTS or visit www.macarter.org.